Hello everybody! Today we are going to be looking at a scenario where the UK and France go to war in 2024. Now, I'm gonna try to base this off of a little realism, try to make it realistic. So I'm gonna make up a story. So basically, in 2023, before British and French relations plummet, and we see the French assassinate King Charles, and NATO does not do anything against the French, even though the French government funded it, so the United Kingdom declares war on France. But as soon as the UK declares war on France, we can see Greece joining in. Now, if you guys didn't know, France and Greece actually have a defensive pact. I think it counts for France too if they get declared war on. So yeah, Greece kind of just has to join this one. NATO is going to stay out of the war though, because, well, both France and the UK are in NATO, and this seems like more of a them problem. Also, guys, looking at military power here, we can see the UK is 6 on the rankings, or military firepower, and France is... 11. <laughs> so the UK's Navy and Air Force is a lot more experienced. It might not be bigger, but it's a lot more advanced and experienced, so it's going to have the upper advantage here. And the first thing we see is the British Navy pushing back the French Navy. After probably maybe weeks or even months of naval warfare, the UK gets the advantage in the English Channel and completely destroys the French Navy in the region. Now, the UK's goal here isn't really going to be, well, they don't want to invade main mainland France, they kind of just want to starve them out to a point of surrender, so they can just get some revenge, you know. And that's exactly what the UK is going to do as they continue to push back the French Navy. Eventually, after a lot of naval warfare, we see the French Navy completely collapse in the northern regions, as the UK takes complete dominance and continues, well, building up their navy. And it is at this point we see another one, or, well, one of the UK's allies join the war, and that is Portugal. Now, Portugal and the UK do have an alliance. It's one of the oldest alliances in the world. Now, the UK wanted mainly for Portugal to join so they could distract Greece, and distract Greece they will do. The Portuguese navy pushes down with British funding over to the Strait of Gibraltar, and basically occupies it, and, well, stops any, any aid going to Greece, or any aid going to France from up here, so now they have to go all the way around. So Portugal kind of just, that's what Portugal does. They also serve as a pretty good port point for the UK. And overall, this was a pretty good call for the UK. After a while, it seems a lot of countries in Europe are funding France, and it doesn't seem like France is going to starve out anytime soon. So the UK sighs in annoyance as they now have to invade France, in which they will try to do. Near Dunkirk, the British are going to make a small landing and push around slightly. They're also going to land near Normandy and in Brittany. Now, we shouldn't fully underestimate the French army here, as they fully push back the one in Normandy and almost completely kick out the one in Brittany. But the one in Dunkirk continues to go successfully as they continue to push around and aim for Paris. We see multiple British troops and ships move down to the Strait of Gibraltar to enforce it from any French harassment or Greek harassment with their navies, and Portugal or the Portuguese and British Navy hold it firmly. But with the Greece coming over to France and supporting them, we see the front in Brittany get absolutely destroyed, and the British get pushed back almost all the way back to the coastline. At this point in time, we see the British completely bombard the French coast, and also, well, bomb a lot of historical cities, historical places, crippling the French as much as they can. We see the British once again make a landing in Normandy and push around. This time it goes much more successfully. But the landing in Brittany, which they try to do again, fails. Looking at the other side of the world, we see British and Portuguese troops land in French Guiana and push around and easily capture the area. So the British have come up with a new plan here, and that is going to be to try and invade France from in the south too, to try to, well, split up French forces to a point where it's easier. So the British and Portuguese make a move on the French, and, well, they push up their navy here. I'm just going to do a line. They push up their navy, and, well, French and British and Portuguese navies meet up, including the Greek navy being here, or Greek ships, and they clash. At the start, we see the French actually managing to push back them just a tiny bit as they gain the advantage in the area. But as the British send more ships over, we can see that, well, they get pushed back. The British manage to push them back to a point of where they encircle Corsica and push back the French Navy all the way back to their coastline. Or mostly back to their coastline. We see a landing made on Corsica and the island is quickly wiped out. And guys, I gotta tell you something, I don't think any other country would join this war. Now you might think Germany, maybe Spain, Italy, no. 
Germany has very good relations with both the UK and France, same with Spain, Italy, and basically every other Western country. The British do even better as they make more landings and even connect all of their front lines, making one ginormous push into France. They land in Brittany once again, but it is stalemated by French forces, and we see the British push back up here. As they get cut off once again, and the French manage to push them back a good bit. But over in the south, we see the French navy get finally collapsed and destroyed, as the British fully, well, destroy it. We see the British trying out their plan, and they land in the south of France, but it does not go too well, as, well, the French immediately push them out. So they're gonna wait maybe a couple more days, or maybe even weeks, to make a re-landing in the south. The British re-push into France, and capture the coastline once again, and capturing most of their northern coastline. But once again, the French push back and cut them off, and push the Mac a very good bit. But on the other side of things, we do see the British once again land in southern France, but this time it is successful as they establish a front line in southern France. That's a lot of southern France. We see another landing being made in the south of France, or the southwest of France, as it lands in the primarily English provinces. I think English province, the most are like down here, I think. Don't hold me on that. But this also goes successfully. We see the Greek Navy trying their best to harass the Portuguese and British navies, but it's just, it's just not enough. We see the British now push down and aim for Paris, and we see them meet the gates of Paris. This is by far the bloodiest battle of the entire war, but it ends in a British victory as they capture Paris. Though France does not surrender yet, they think they can still do something, as they push back the British completely out of Normandy, but they fail to take back Paris. They even almost pushed them out of Brittany, and they completely pushed them out of this area down here. The British brought in their front lines, and the area around Paris is continuing to get taken. The southern front lines completely capture the coastline of southern France, and we can see, once again, another landing being made over here. With complete air power and naval power, once again land in Normandy and push around, reconnecting all of their front lines. We see multiple other landings being made on the coast. Most of them all connect, and one giant push is made into France. After a little bit more pushing inside of mainland France, we can see the French finally surrender. Now, we see the Greeks also sue for peace here, just white peace, and the British are going to go ahead and accept that, as well as the Portuguese. Alright, looking at a peace treaty here, we can see the British have annexed most of all of Brittany, as well as Dunkirk in this northern part of France. But other than that, France gets a new government, the British also get Corsica, and the Portuguese are granted French Guiana. And the British will just snatch up the rest of their colonies. And Greece, of course, is just left out of it because they white pieced out. But they do own minor concessions to Portugal, such as money, war reparations, and so does France. I think this is pretty realistic. I don't think the British would take that much land. They might not even take this much. They might just give France a new government. Or maybe just get occupied zones, occupation zones. That might be more realistic. But I think it would be like this. Thank you all for watching. This scenario is going to end here. Make sure to like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Bye.